boys and girls and thanks for joining us for another video from FPC Kids. It's Christina here and today we're going to be learning some more wonderful truths from the Bible. But before we come to that we're going to do some singing so the words and the music will be up on the screen for you to follow along with so why don't you sing your very very best as we come to sing this chorus. Well, boys and girls, for our lesson for today, we're going to be coming back to another Mr. Men character. And as you can see, our character for today is Mr. Busy. Now, this is quite a funny story. And if you were to read through the character of Mr. Busy and his story, you're going to hear all about how Mr. Busy, of course, was busy about everything. He always was busy. He never took time to sit down, never took time to slow down. He was always doing something and always doing something really, really fast. And we're told that he was able to clean his house in like two minutes flat. We're told he was able to do everything so fast. And one day he decided that he would go at his next door neighbour and he decided he would go and ask his next door neighbour out for a picnic. Mr Busy loved picnics. But living next door to Mr Busy was somebody completely different to Mr Busy and that was Mr Slow. And Mr Slow, as you can guess from his name, was as slow as you can get. We're told if he was to read a book, Mr Busy was still, or Mr Slow would be still on the first line by the time you had the rest of the book finished. He's like a sloth, he was always slow. And Mr Slow liked nothing more than to just have a really slow, lazy day. But we are told that Mr Busy, he liked everything to go really fast, he was always busy, and so he went to Mr Slow's house to go and take Mr Slow on a picnic. So Mr Busy were told that he arrived at Mr Slow's house at five past seven in the morning, that was pretty early for a picnic, but he arrived at five past seven in the morning to wake up Mr Slow and get Mr Slow going for his picnic. Of course, Mr Slow, where do you think he was at five past seven in the morning? He was still in bed. But Mr Busy knocked on the door, nobody answered, but so he let himself in and he went ran up and Mr Slow to Mr Slow's bedroom. He's like, Mr Slow, come on, we're going to go for a picnic. And of course, Mr Slow couldn't believe it. He didn't want to go for a picnic, he wanted to stay in bed. He wanted to take things slow, take things easy. We're told that Mr Busy was like, no, we're going for a picnic, and he got everything ready, the whole picnic ready. Only oh, took him a couple of minutes, he was going that fast, running around Mr Slow's house, getting everything ready. So finally, Mr Slow got up out of bed and made his way downstairs, and Mr Busy was like, right, let's go, we're going to go, we're going to go out into the country, and we're going to go have a picnic. And we're told that Mr. Mr. Busy raced out the door and he made it a mile down the road and he looked back and Mr. Slow was nowhere to be seen. Mr. Slow had only made it to the bottom of the garden gate. He hadn't made it, even made it out of the garden yet. So Mr. Busy, he ran back and they're like, well, we're just going to have to have our picnic here. 
but the grass needed cut it. And so Mr. Busy, he raced around, got the lawnmower and cut around the grass. And he would have took a lot quicker except Mr. Slow was in his way. So finally, they were able to sit down and have their picnic. But we're told that Mr. Busy, he really enjoyed it. But that's because he ate so fast, there was hardly any food left for Mr. Slow. So Mr. Busy's like, well, you know what? Tomorrow morning, I'll come back even earlier and we'll go for a proper picnic in the country. But of course, Mr. Slow, he could think of nothing worse. But the next morning, Mr. Busy got up and was at Mr. Slow's house at six o'clock in the morning. He wasn't taking any chances. And he knocked on the door and no one answered. He let himself in, he couldn't see anybody around. So he made his way up to Mr. Slow's bedroom and Mr. Slow wasn't in the bed. He couldn't find Mr. Slow anywhere. And he looked around and he shouted, but Mr. Slow was nowhere to be found. So Mr. Busy, he sadly had to leave and go have his picnic on his own. Where do you think Mr. Slow was? Well, he was hiding under the bed. He didn't want to go on a picnic. He wanted to go back to bed. And so when Mr. Busy left, Mr. Slow slowly made his way back into bed and went back to sleep. But you know, Mr. Busy, he was so busy about his life. He was so busy doing things. And he didn't really have time to think about what his friend, Mr. Slow, wanted to do. And you know, Mr. Slow, um, he didn't want to go on a picnic. He wanted, didn't want to do these things. But Mr. Busy was so busy that he didn't really realize what his friend wanted to do. He was always busy doing something. You know, boys and girls, when I was thinking of Mr. Busy, when I was reading through this story, you know, that reminds me of people who are always busy, always busy and always too busy. And even always too busy to think about the gospel and to think about God and to think about the Bible and what the Bible teaches them about the, about the fact that they need to have their sins taken away. You know, maybe you're one of those people. Maybe you're always busy. You're busy at school. You're busy with all your friends at school. Then you come home and you're busy doing your homework. Then you're busy getting your dinner. Then you're busy out playing with your friends or doing things. Then it's time to go to bed. And the next morning you're up, you're busy getting to school and you do the whole thing over again. And not once do you take one minute or one moment to think about your sin. And maybe you've heard that you need to be saved, maybe on videos like this, maybe at church, maybe at Sunday school, maybe at children's meeting. You've heard you need to be saved and you think to yourself, well, I'm too busy, I'm too busy, You're like Mr. Busy, I'm too busy, I can't do it now, but I'll do it later. I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it the day after that. But tomorrow comes and you're still too busy. And then you think, oh, you know what? I'll do it after I leave primary school. I'll do it when I get to secondary school. I'll be less busy then, but then secondary school comes. You've got more friends, you've got more work to do, more homework to do, and you're busy than ever. And then maybe you think, well, you know what? I'll wait till I leave school. Wait till I maybe get a job, maybe go to university. And then you hit 18, you get a car, you're busy driving around the country, you've got more friends, you maybe got a job, and things are busier than ever. And then maybe you think, well, I'll not think about it now. I'm too busy to get saved now. I'll wait till I'm maybe a bit older. Maybe when I've got married, when I've got children, then I'll do it then. But then you're even busier when you get married, even busier when maybe you've got children. And then, then you think, well, I'm too busy now. So you know what? I'll wait until I'm, I get older. I'll wait till I'm maybe 67 years old. When my life is coming to the end, then I'll get right with God. But you know, maybe you'll be too busy then too. And then it'll be too late. You know, it reminds me of a story in the Bible about a man who when he heard he needed to be saved, well, he came back with that message, I'm too busy. And that man was called Felix. And we're told that the Apostle Paul, that great missionary that we read about in the New Testament, had came to that man Felix and had told him all about the gospel, all about what Christ had done for him, that Christ had died on the cross to take away his sins. But you know, when Felix heard all of those things, we're told very sadly that he said to Paul, go thy way for this time. When I have a more convenient season, I will call on thee. Felix was really saying to Paul, Paul, another time. I'm too busy now, too much going on. Another time and I will call on you. You know, very sadly, boys and girls, we never read of Felix coming and asking the Lord into his heart. We never read of Felix taking the time to ask the Lord to take away his sins. He never did it. You know, boys and girls, it might be if you keep saying, I'm too busy, like Mr. Busy. I'm too busy. I've got too much to do, too many things to do. It might be that you never have the time to come and ask the Lord into your heart to take away your sin. You know, there's another verse in the Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, where it says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. And you are to come now if you're not saved. Now, today, right now, take that time right now and ask the Lord into your heart to take away your sin. Don't use the excuse that you're too busy. 
don't use that excuse, but come now. Ask the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart to take away your sin. Now is the day of salvation. So boys and girls, maybe you are busy. Maybe you've got lots of things on. Maybe you know you need to be saved. Well, take that time. Don't be like Mr. Busy, but take that time and come and ask the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart to take away your sin. Tell him you're sorry for your sin. Ask him for forgiveness. And thankfully, the Lord will take away your sin. So boys and girls, we're going to finish off our story today on Mr. Busy by having a word of prayer. Just remember the ABC of prayer. We're going to fold our arms, bow our heads and close our eyes as we come and pray unto the Lord. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank thee, Lord, for even this story today and the warnings, Lord, that there are from the story of Mr. Busy and, Lord, even the warning from that story of that man, Felix, Lord, and even that warning from that verse that now is the day of salvation. And, Lord, we do pray if there be any boys and girls listening in who are not saved, that they will come right now, that they'll ask thee into their hearts to take away their sins. With us now, Lord, we pray, help us remember all that we've learned. Help us even to hide it in our hearts. For your sake, we ask these things. Amen. Thank you.